Hello and welcome to Hexed Encountered. My name is Joe. Today I'm going to be starting a playthrough of the game Aces of Valor, a solitaire game of World War I aerial combat. This game is designed by Eric Von Rossing and is published by Legion War Games. Now I did two previous videos on this game. One was a first look where we kind of looked at the components and talked about how the game works, etc, etc. The second is the campaign setup, which is the previous video to this one, which kind of gives the background on everything, how the campaign is set up, etc, etc. So it would probably be a good idea to at least watch that video if you have not, um, or even both of the previous two videos if you want to get the full picture on how this is going to progress and get you know a little bit of more information on how the game works. Um, I mean, I will be explaining things as I go along, but there will be some you know there's some good background information in the other two videos, neither of which is all that long, but um, you know you can uh, view at your own discretion, so to speak. So we're going to get underway here, and we're going to start our mission. And I drew a mission card in the previous video. And this will be our mission. We are flying as the Germans. So uh, we are the Germans and we are doing a trench strafing mission with four fighters. And uh, so we'll talk about the details of this in a moment. But I did want to give you, uh, you know, basically an idea of what's going on in this video. Okay, so we're getting ready to play here. So the first thing we have to do is read what we get, right? So we get four fighters. So I'm going to pick four fighters from my group, from my squadron that will participate in this battle. And we'll get to that in a moment. Conduct attacks on D3. So we're going to roll a D6 and we're going to have it. And that'll tell us the number of targets. So let's do that. We're going to do that. We get a one. So it's one, one target. That should be easy enough. Targets in enemy trench sector, sectors. F through H. Okay, use table F8 to determine ground target types. Ignore ground target result during flight event check. And the mission points we earn will be per target damage. Okay, so there are two points, and I explained this in the other video. Two types of points. There's mission points and victory points. Mission points is kind of like a currency, and you use those to buy victory points and also do things like repair and replace aircraft and upgrade them. So, um... That is the mission card. So we are having a trench strafing mission. So here's our map. And this is the no, this is no man's land. So the German side is red and the allied side or the triple entente side is blue. Okay. So here we have German trenches and the allied trenches. Now it is possible to have other types of aircraft besides fighters in a mission. There are bombers and there are two seaters as well. So depending on the mission, you won't you will have things other than fighters to to deploy and use. In this mission, however, we we only have fighters. Okay, so here's our random ground targets, right? So we're going to be rolling 2d6 and in enemy trenches, it'll tell us what what the uh, what the ground target will be. And we got a nine. So a nine is a tank. So there's an interesting one. So we get to attack a tank. Okay. Simple enough. So here we have a tank. And so the numbers on the on the target, okay, the first number is its anti-aircraft defense. The middle number is its initiative. And that helps determine where it where it participates in combat. Uh, we'll get into that when we get into combat. And the third number is its um, destruction rating. So you need four to damage it, which will give you two victory or two mission points. Then it would get flipped over and its ratings change a little bit from twos to ones. And then the eight is how many total hits it will take to destroy it. And then you would get four mission points instead of two. So you don't get both. It's not like you get two when you damage it and four more when you destroy it. You just get four if you destroy it or two if you only damage it. So we're going to put that in sector F because it said FGH. 
So this should be a fairly short mission. So our air base is here, Airfield C. We drew that in the first, uh, the previous video, the campaign setup. This is our flight marker, which will tell us where we are on the map. And we're going to start here. Now, you can't move diagonally, so we would have to go to Depot C. So we're going to have to go up, basically, at some point. We can go up to Cambrai and then across. We can go this way and then up. Now, we're fairly safe on this side of the line. Things can happen. You roll for an event on each move, and each move is a turn. We have 24 total turns that we can use for this, which should be plenty because we're only one, two, three, four, five away. So it should take us five moves. To get here on the way we will probably well we will deal with any aircraft fire for sure over here we'll also deal with the target we will also possibly get enemy fighters to deal with because you can roll that if you roll for an event as you roll an event you get you could get enemy fighter aircraft because obviously the enemy is flying as well we don't even know yet who the enemy is um, because we are flying as the Germans, we have the possibility of facing the French, the British, or the Americans. Now, when you fly as one of the Allied powers, you know, when, when you're flying as a French, British, or American squadron, your enemy is always the Germans, so you, don't never, you never need to roll for that, obviously. So in this case, the next step in our sequence of play is to choose our ready aircraft for the mission. So let's do that. Okay, so here we have our eight eight planes that are part of our squadron. Now I explained what all the markings mean on the mark on the counter rather in the previous video. But briefly, the four six that's firepower. So uh, if you roll a four or higher you get one hit. If you roll a six you get two hits. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. The the name of the pilot is at the top. They just use first names, but these are pretty much pretty well mapped to actual German pilots from the First World War. There is a uh, Manfred von, there is a Manfred, which would rec represent the Red Baron Manfred von Richthofen. Um, the you know all the pilots for the other nations are all real guys too. Eddie Rickenbacker's in there, Rene Fonk, uh, Billy Bishop, all those guys are represented. So we have we have uh, pilots here, and they have ratings. You see zero zero that those are it's a bonus basically one the first is for air combat the second is for air to ground combat so you want somebody with a number as opposed to a zero well a zero is a number but you know what I mean a positive number so we have Bruno who's a zero zero but we have Yosef here who's a one one we have um, Eric who's a one two so let's take him and we'll put him in our current flight box. And then we will also take, well, let's just say we're going to swap these two. And I'm going to take the bottom row, guys. So we're going to take Rudolph, Lothar, and Carl, who are all zero zeros. Because we didn't really draw great on our, we got, you know, a 1-1 one, one and an 0-1 oh, and a 1-2. We didn't really draw all that well, let's be honest. So because we only have one target, let's take the somewhat rookie crew, but I want Eric with his two for air to ground. He's the important one. So that's going to be who we're taking. Eric, Rudolph, Lothar, and Carl. Okay. So now that we've done that, we would roll for weather. So there are there is a chart right on the map, and then you roll one die, one D6, one two will be clear, Three, four will be light clouds. Five, six will be heavy clouds. Now that will impact things. Clear obviously has no effect. Light clouds would give a minus one to artillery spotting and photo recon missions, neither of which is what we're doing. And heavy clouds would be minus two, but the heavy clouds also will impact AA. So any aircraft would have a minus one die roll modifier if we have heavy clouds. So let's roll and see what we get. And we get a four, which is light clouds. So that's really not going to impact us at all. In this particular mission so now that we've done we've rolled for weather we we don't need to roll for ordnance because we we uh, as the Germans they don't carry uh, bombs or rockets on their fighters okay flight phase we roll for damaged aircraft we don't have any we roll for uh, we move the flight so that's the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna move to Cambrai 
Okay, so once you move, or even if you stay in the same box, you have to roll for an event. Now you would do an AA check. We don't have any AA in this in this area, so we do a flight event check. So we're going to roll. Um, we're going to roll one die, and we're going to check the flight event. Um, the flight event chart. So the flight event check is real simple. We roll two d6, and if we roll, if depending on where you are you'll need a varying roll to actually trigger an event. In the friendly rear, it's an 11 or 12. Over the trenches, it'll be a nine to 12, and in the enemy rear, it's a 10 to 12. So the most likely place for an event would be over the trenches, which is what you would expect. I mean, there were literally millions of men in the trenches, not obviously in the area you'd be flying over, but it was a densely, densely populated area with a lot of armaments in there. So let's let's roll our two, two D6 here, and we get a nine. So if we had been over the trenches, this would be an event, but because we are not, it is not. So I'm gonna, I, I need to move my turn track because moving here is a turn. So now we ha we're on turn, uh, well, we'll be moving into turn three. This was turn two, so now we're gonna move here, which is turn three. And then we're going to roll again for an event because we don't have AA and we won't until we get over the enemy trench. We rolled an eight, so still no event. Now we move to the balloon sector. So we're in turn number four. We do the same thing. We rolled a six. Again, only an 11 or a 12 would have been an event here. Now we're moving over the trenches. Things are going to get a little bit more dangerous. So we roll, uh, now we're in turn five and we roll again. And we get a seven. So we need a nine to trigger an event over the trenches. Okay, so now we're gonna, now we're about to enter enemy territory and this is where we're gonna have to deal with some things aside from the target itself. We're gonna have to deal with any aircraft and obviously the possibility of an event. So we're gonna move to turn six and we're gonna move into our target area. And first thing we do when we move in here is uh, we do an AA check first. Okay, so we roll one D6 for an AA check. And one to three is no AA, a four is light, a five is moderate, and a six is heavy. And this will apply to all four aircraft. All four aircraft will have, assuming, assuming we don't roll a one to three, if we roll a four or higher, we're going to have to deal with any aircraft, and we'll have to roll each, air, each of our aircraft against that. And we got a two, which is no any aircraft. So this is so far a pretty uneventful mission. And okay, so now we move on to our event check. So again, we're gonna roll two dice and we get a 10. This is an event, okay. So when you roll an event, you pull out the flight event outcome table. So we're over the trenches. So you can see if we roll a two, we might get a weather change or engine trouble. Three to five would be an enemy raid, six, seven enemy fighters, eight, 10 ground fire, 11, 12 ground targets. We ignore this because of our mission rule. Because we are attacking a ground target, we're gonna ignore ground targets if this comes up. Yeah, it says right here, treat is no effect if escorting two seaters or bombers, or if in an objective hex of a ground target attack mission. Example, trench strafing, which is what we're doing, or bombing. So that's the, that's the situation there. So let's roll our 2d6. We get a four and a four is an enemy raid. So we roll 2d2, we'll give the number of enemy two seaters. Oh, I'm sorry, we roll a d2. So we roll a d6 and divide by three. So four, that would be, uh, that's a two. Because uh, one to three would be one, four to six would be two. So they're going to be two enemy two seaters. And now we roll a D three and add one to it. So again, that's two plus one is three. So we're going to have two two seaters and three enemy fighters to take on in our air combat. So we're going to see air combat, then we'll do ground combat, and that will probably um, take us through to the end of the mission. We'll have to fly back, obviously, depending on what happens. So this is where things can get hairy because, as I mentioned, my pilots aren't all that great. So if we draw poorly for, for the enemy forces, this is going to be kind of, this could get kind of ugly. Okay. So 
We're going to roll for nationality first. So one to three will be British, four, five French, six American. So it basically represents the balance of forces. There weren't a ton of Americans, obviously, and they only participated at the end of the war, etc. So you have a 50% chance of fighting the British, a 33% chance of getting the French, and that leaves, what, 17% for the Americans. So let's roll our die. We get a four, so we will be fighting the French. Okay, so we'll take be taking on some French aircraft. Now we have to roll the fighter type as well. So we're going to roll in a tier three column because that's what we are. And if we roll a one to three, we get tier two enemies. If we roll a four to six, we get tier three enemies. We rolled a one, so we're going to get tier two enemies, which in theory gives that gives us an advantage because they're. The tier two fighters are not quite up to the standard of the tier three fighters as you would expect. All right, so we're going to shift over to the operations chart and go through how air combat works. Okay, so here we are in the operations chart. Our current flight is up here. We have Eric, Rudolph, Lothar, and Carl. Now I've pulled out the 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 second tier French here, and as you can see, they have a seven and a five. So the performance is the main difference. The performance for a tier two is seven, tier three is eight. All the aircraft in the game tier wise are identical. The differences come in with the pilots and basically as you play, you may gain, um, you know, skilled, you can skill up your pilot, basically some of your pilots. If they get kills, there's a chance they can skill up kind of thing. So I'm going to dump all of these guys here into the cup. We're going to shake it up. And I'm going to pull out, so we have, whoops, I pulled out four. All right, so we have Armand, and we'll just stick him down here for now. We have Gabriel, or Gabriel, if you prefer, and Georges. All right, so those are our French that we will be fighting against. I'm making a shadow there. All right. So those are the French fighters that we will be taking on. We also get two enemy two-seaters. The two-seaters are all identical. They don't have pilot names. You can see what they are right here. So the thing that makes them dangerous is they have front and rear. So they have an offensive armament and a defensive armament. That's what that's called. They shoot from both ends, unlike the fighters. So there was, they're... But they have a lower chance to hit. They have a 5 plus instead of a 4 slash 6. So there's the main difference between those two. All right. So moving on. So combat sequence. So here, here's the combat sequence up above, which you can't really see it. But it says, first thing we're going to do is roll initiative for all aircraft. Perform actions in, in, in initiative order. Resolve attack, spotting, photo recon, roll combat event, unless combat has ended. So at the end of each round, there can be three rounds. At the end of each round, we're going to check for a combat event. Okay, so first thing we're going to do here is we need to detect, we need to roll for our detection advantage. Okay, so we're going to roll 2d6 and you can, you can have the enemy surprise you and attack, which gives them a plus two on their initiative rolls in the, fir in the first round. Three to four enemy spots you and attacks if equal or greater force. So they have five planes. We have four. So they are ahead of us in force. Um, and they would gain plus one in that event. Uh, five, six enemy spots you and attacks if equal or greater force. So it's the same, but they don't get, <clears throat> they don't get a plus one on a five or a six. Seven, eight, no advantage. Go right into combat. Nine, ten is basically the flip of this side and the flip of that. So we spot them first, we get a plus one, or we surprise them and we get a plus two. So pretty straightforward. We are going to roll on this right now. 2d10, uh, 2d6 rather. We rolled an eight, which is no advantage. So we're going even up. So based on being even up, we're actually going to do okay, except against uh, Georges here because he's got a two air-to-air uh, -air skill. And we do not have anybody with a two air-to-air -air skill. So it's going to come down to the die rolls. So we roll 
the 1d6 plus the performance rating, which would be 8 for us and 7 for the French, or 4 when we get to the two-seaters, and um, plus the air skill. So Eric would get a plus 1. None of, the other, none of my other guys will. Georges will get a 2, but none of the other French will, except for the, the two-seaters. Oh, I didn't, I, they aren't the same. I just picked these two off the top, which means they're the two best. <laughs> let me, let me draw these out because I'm, I should have, and I did it. So let me draw these guys out. Put these guys in here. Draw two out. And we get the one, two, and the one, one again. How about that? <laughs> the game says, try to cheat. You cannot do it. <laughs> um yeah so <laughs> whew, okay um yeah so that's how it works we're going to roll one die for each plane so let's do eric first he's an eight we're going to get a plus one so we're going to add something to nine based on what we roll here so we rolled a six that's pretty good 15 it's going to be hard for anybody else to beat that um because we don't have any advantages to apply so now let's roll for rudolph um, you know what? Let's alternate. Let's do uh, let's do George Georges first. We'll just alternate. Keep it interesting. I forget what the rules say about how you do this, but I'm going to alternate. One. <laughs> so seven plus two is nine plus one is ten. So he's there. Now you compare these two in combat. So if Eric attacks Georges, he's going to have a, a a five. Will be the difference in attack or to. Basically, this is kind of modeling the advantage you know, pilot skill and maybe positioning and so on and so forth as air combat begins. That's what that is modeling. Now we'll do Rudolph. He rolls a one, so he's going to get a nine. Now we'll do Armand. And Armand gets a ten. So he's in the same box with Georges. And then we'll do Lothar. He gets a two, so he's a ten as well. The ten is getting crowded. And a 9 for Gabriel. I'm rolling the same kind of number every time here. Carl, what does Carl get? Carl gets a 6. So with Carl, get, Carl getting a 6, he's going to be in a 14 box. So I've got two, two planes with a decent advantage. Now we need to do our two-seaters. They start with a 4. So let's roll. And we get a 6 plus 4 is <laughs> another 10. Okay. And we'll do our last two-seater, and they also get a 10. It's funny how I roll the same number, right? I sometimes feel like, like here I have a three that's face up, and I rolled a two. So maybe it doesn't work that way. But this was a six. Let me see if I can get something other than a six. I get a five. I don't know. It just seems that sometimes <laughs> I roll the same number over and over again. Anyway, so here's our initiative. Right, so we're all set up now. Now we perform actions in initiative order, which means Eric goes first. So he has to attack the nearest enemy in terms of initiative, which would be one of these guys, Georges or Armand, or the two seaters. Okay, so Mr. Von Rossing has uh, has obviously considered this issue. We have an initiative priority table. So first priority goes to fighters, then two-seaters, then bombers. So we know it's going to be one of the fighters. Second is air skill. That's going to tell us that it's uh, Georges here. So he is going to be our target for Eric. Okay, so now what we do is we have to resolve our combat. So here are the actions you can take. You can break off, attack, or go to action taken if you choose not to attack. If attacking, must attack enemy at next lowest initiative position. We know who that is now. Okay, so we're going to do an air-to-air -air gun attack. Okay, so the initiative difference, attacker minus defender, it's five. So with forward guns, it's four. So for each attack die roll, 1d6 plus air skill, each roll equal to or greater than the firing aircraft's gun rating is a hit. So this is the number of, of uh, dice we're rolling. We're rolling uh, four dice. So four dice, and if we, if we roll higher than a four, it's going to be a hit. If we roll a six, it'll be two hits. So you, And we're going to add 
the air skill to it. So his air skill is a one. So basically we need a three or for three for a hit or a five for two hits. And we're going to roll four dice. So we take our four dice. We roll them all. We got two threes and two fives. So that's going to be a whole bunch of hits. So we have, um, four, two, that's two hits. That's two hits. That's one hit. That's one hit. That's six total hits. Okay, so we have six total hits to check. Now we have to check for damage. We roll a d6, we add the die roll modifier, and that's a plus one for each hit beyond the first. That's a five, okay? Um, compared to the target structure rating. And then you see if you go greater than three or more, you destroy the enemy fighter. One, two, damage, equal or less, no damage. So we have a five. <clears throat> now the structural for the fighters is five. It's always five. Okay. Well, it's, yeah. So we're going to roll one die and we get a one. So a one plus five is six. And six is greater than a five. So he becomes damaged and we flip him over. Okay, so obviously that's a terrible roll. If I had rolled, um, you know, if I had rolled a three, I would have destroyed him, basically. So, um, yeah, one or more damages his plane. So he's damaged. Now we go to Carl. And Carl is going to have the same thing. Carl is going to be attacking the same plane because of the, um, well, actually, it is, yeah, it's air skill before performance rating. So he's going to attack George's as well. So Carl will get, the difference in there is uh, four. So he's going to get three because it's 14 to 10. So he gets three dice. And again, four and six. Now he doesn't have any air skills, so he needs a four or a six. He got uh, he got a six, so that's two hits, and a five is one hit. So he gets three hits. So he's going to get a plus two on his damage roll, and uh, five plus two is seven, and seven is going to be enough. Once you're damaged, if you're damaged again, you are destroyed. So he gets thrown down into the destroyed box down here. So he's been shot down by Carl. And I just realized by looking here, these are German two-seaters. So let me pull these guys out because these are incorrect. We want French two-seaters. And luckily enough, they have the same exact thing because as I mentioned, they're all the same in terms of ratings. So it's the same. Um, let's do this. We'll keep all the French together in the top row, and Lothar can hang in the bottom row. So pretty much everybody's going to attack Lothar once we get to a French pilot, which will happen next, now that Carl's uh, combat sequence is completed. Okay, now because Carl here shot down Georges, we need to roll to see if he gets to upgrade his skill. So you need a six, but you get to add the air-to-air -air skill of the opposing plane or opposing pilot, rather, to your roll. So he's going to get a DRM of two. So in reality, we need to roll a four. If we roll a four, then he gets um, to upgrade. He gets a skilled marker, which will make him a one, one instead of a zero, zero. So if we roll a four or higher here, and we rolled a four, so he does get it. So he gets a skilled marker, which is right here, skilled marker. And he's going to get to, to carry that with him here. Well, we'll put it next to him. So Carl is now skilled, and he's a 1-1. So we just got better. And he carries this on throughout the campaign. If he levels up again, he becomes an ace. And the ace, I think, is on the other side. And he gets a 2-2, two -two, right? You can't go higher than an ace. But Carl is well on his way. Shooting down a very skilled pilot in Georges. And I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. So anyway, uh, ba, ba, ba. so we have uh, Georges is gone. We did Carl. We moved down to the next 
lowest. So we have no 13s, 12s, or 11s. We go to 10. And um, when we have a tie here, I think in terms of initiative priority, again, it goes uh, fighter, then air skill, then performance rating. So that's going to mean that our two seaters will not, well, actually, uh, fighter first. So it's going to be Lothar because Armand is a zero and Lothar is a zero, and the performance rating for the German is slightly higher. So Lothar gets to go first. So what, what Lothar will do here is he's going to attack the next lowest, which is Gabriel. So the difference is only a one, so we roll two dice. And we get a five and a six. Rolling really well on the attacks thus far here. So that's three hits. So we're going to add a plus two to our damage roll. And we roll the six plus two is eight. Eight is three more than a five. Guess what? Gabriel gets shot down. So again, we're going to roll. Now, Gabriel has no, has a zero for skill. So he gets no modifier. Rudolph will need a six to level up. And he gets a five. So sorry, Rudolph. Not today, my friend. Okay. Um, now we go to... Um, actually, I'm sorry. That was not Rudolph. That was Lothar. So Lothar, sorry, my friend. He does not get it. So, actually, I need to move these guys to the action taken. So, they're off the board. This is how you keep track. And don't do what I just did and forget who was up. So, Carl, Eric, and Lothar have used have been used. And they're basically circling around, coming in for round two after round one is completed. We have Armand to go next. Now, all these guys are going to attack poor old Rudolph here because he has the lowest initiative of anybody. So this could be bad for, for, for Mr. Rudolph here. Armand, okay, he's a seven. The difference is one, so they're going to roll two dice. And, uh, yeah, they roll two dice. He gets a one, which is a miss, but he gets a six, which is two hits. Now, <clears throat> there's no bonus or anything, so... We roll two dice. No, we roll one dice. And he had two hits, so he's going to get a plus one DRM. Rolls a four, which is equal to his five. But when you're equal or less, there's no damage. So no damage for Armand. He goes down to the <clears throat> action used box. And now we'll do our two seaters. Now, the two seaters defensive armament. And the bomb, this is true for bombers as well. Only comes into play when you are attacking them. Because you're theoretically behind them, trying to shoot at them, and so they fire back with their rear guns. When they're attacking, they only use their front. So they need a five or more to hit. They will also, first guy here, he's going to attack Rudolph. He's going to get a plus one on his, <clears throat> on his, um, on his roll. So it's going to be a difference of two. I'm sorry. It's a, he's going to get two dice, and he's going to apply a plus one. And he gets a two and a four, a two and a three, which becomes a three and a four. So that is one hit. No, actually, he's a five. So that's no hits. No hits. <clears throat> sorry. Got a frog in my throat this morning here. Same deal here. He's going to roll. He gets a one as well. So we roll two dice. And he gets a he gets two hits, so he's got no. He gets one hit. I keep thinking four. I have four ingrained in my brain. That's one hit. So he gets one hit, and there's no DRM on it because it's just one hit. So he needs to roll a six or higher, which is not going to be easy. And he rolled a two, so no damage. So Rudolph, he doesn't have anybody lower than him in initiative, so that ends the combat round. We roll for a combat event. So here is our combat event check, C10. Four or less, a 1D6 enemy fighter arrives. So this could be, you know, uh, bad. Um, five to seven, any enemy aircraft remain. Eight plus, all enemies depart. So you roll 2D6. 
There are DRMs here. None of these apply. We're not in the rear. We're not over an airfield. And we're not in our rear or over our airfield. We just rolled 2d6. And we rolled an 8. And an 8 is all enemy aircraft depart. So these guys are all going to am scray out of here. Armand and our two two-seaters, they are leaving. And um, <clears throat> now we got to tally up our, our mission points here because we get mission points for destroying two enemy aircraft. So you get one for each enemy aircraft destroyed. So that'll give us two. And then you get one, uh, you get a plus on the pilot skill. So Georges is a two. So we're going to end up with four mission points for destroying these two aircraft, which is pretty nice. Okay, so I kind of set this up for our ground combat because that's our next thing, right? We have our target here. So he is a, he is a two initiative. And I believe, if I remember correctly, you do not roll for them. They just go in the box, I think. Yes, it's just their current initiative rating. So since it's just their current initiative rating, pretty easy. We roll for our initiative here. So we'll start with uh, Rudolph. He is an 8. We roll one die. He gets a 3, so he's an 11. We'll do Eric. He gets a plus 2 on his roll. <laughs> 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. Doesn't really matter as much here because we're all attacking the ground target. Then we'll do um, Lothar. He's a 5. Plus 8 is 13. So, so far he's going to go first. And now Carl, the hero of our previous uh, thing, he's going to roll on a 9 because he's got the plus 1 now. And he gets a 6. 6 plus 9 is 15. So he is going first. Carl is the star of the show here So thus far. Okay, so attacking a ground um, target is a little different. First you have to roll for its AA attack. So the AA attack number is the um, first number. So this, this two, right? The second two is their initiative, and the four is the number of hits they have to take to be uh, damaged. And then once they're flipped over, if you get to a total of eight, you would destroy the target, to just reiterate what I mentioned earlier. So we're going to start with Carl. So we have to roll for the AA first. So they have two AA and okay so we roll two dice because you roll the number for their uh, AA so we're going to roll two dice and each six is a hit and we got a one and a two so no hits so look Carl can now make his strafing run so the difference in initiative between 15 and 2 is 13 so that's um, massive but it is a strafing attack so you don't really um it does come into play, but it's it's much different scale. Like in air-to-air, -air, that would be a massive advantage. But it's also kind of an impossible advantage to get. Anyway, we're going to roll three dice. So three dice for Carl. And we get a six, a three, and a three. Okay, so the six is two hits. Um, and the threes, because of his plus one skill for air-to-ground now, those are fours, which become... One hit. So he gets four total hits. So just like with aircraft, you have to roll for the damage afterwards. So looking at this, okay, we have strafing attack, which is what we just did. We had a 13. That's why we rolled three dice and we added the DRM for his ground skill. Pretty straightforward. Then we have our strafing bomb damage. Okay, so when we each hit, we roll on C13. This is C13. So we're going to roll four dice. If we roll a three or higher, we're going to do a hit. Pretty straightforward. So let's roll. I'll roll all four dice. And we got three hits. So we put a three hit marker here. Put a three hit marker. And... Carl is done. He goes to the action taken box. We move on to Lothar. Now again, we have to roll for our AA. <clears throat> and we get a hit. So he's been hit by AA fire. 
So when you get hit by AA fire, you have to um, you have to roll again, obviously, to determine what the damage is from that. So here on C8 is the aircraft damage. So you roll 1d6, you add the dice ro die roll modifier. There's only one hit, so we don't have to worry about that. So again, we're looking for um, his structural is a 5. So basically we need to roll a 6 for there to be damage here. And we roll the 2. So no damage. No damage. All right, so now he gets to make his attack run. 13, so we're in the same same box, so we're going to roll three dice, and that's a massive roll. We get uh, five hits, so five hits, we're going to roll five dice, I mean five hits, and yeah, we roll five dice. I only have four out, so we're going to roll four, and then we'll roll one. Anything higher than a four will be a hit, and we get one hit. Now let me roll one more die. And we get two hits. So we get two hits. So this is going to become a five. So that's going to flip him. And we get, now we know we're going to get two mission points. So I'm going to move my mission, mission point from four to um, six. And what we're going to do now is Lothar is done. We're going to move to uh, Eric. And he is 11 to 2 is a difference of 9. And that is going to give us 2 dice. But he's going to get a plus 2 on his rolls. He rolls a... He, he gets 4 hits, basically, because we rolled a 6 and a 5 with the plus 2. Those are 8 and 7. So that's uh, 4 hits. So we're going to roll 4 dice again. We need a 4 to hit. And again, we get the, um, do we get the plus two die roll modifier? No. Okay. Ooh, bad roll. We only get a, yeah, there's no die roll modifier. So we only get one hit. So that will increase him to six hits. Eric is done. Uh, did I, I forgot to roll the any aircraft against Eric. Let me do that. No hits. All right. So now we're going to do the same thing, roll anti-aircraft against Rudolph, no hits, two ones. So he's 11, <clears throat> 11 to 2 is 9, so again, it's going to be two dice. He gets no die roll modifier. So that would be one hit. So we're not going to destroy the tank in, in the first round. Um, okay, so that's one hit. Or one, yeah, we roll one die. If it's higher than, oh, wait a minute, uh, three. So that is damage. It's actually higher than a three. And I think I screwed up and Eric had more. He We only needed a three and I thought it was a four. So I think he's actually got more hits. I think that was enough. Um, I need to review this. Uh, shoot. I'm pretty sure we got we destroyed him because if we go back and look, I think he had a three as well as a four. Looking at what's here, I'm pretty sure we actually have destroyed the tank now with this hit. So um, I'm going to move this in here, and then if I screwed this up, we'll just I'll just reshoot something. I guess I guess I don't know um, because I forgot that a three is a hit. Because I had it in my head, a four is a hit. It's a three, that's a hit. So he's destroyed. We get four total mission points for that. We don't have to do a combat event check because the combat ended. So we're going to go back to the main map and we're going to make our way back to, uh, you know, the air base and end the mission. Okay, back on our map now. We're going to take our current flight. We're going to move back over our own lines. We roll... And we get an 8, which is barely not an event, because a 9 would be an event since we're over the trenches. So that's going to be uh, turn number 7. Now we're going to move over our balloon area. So now we're back in the rear, and we have to roll an 11 for an event. And we get a 7. We're going to move up again. We'll roll again. Again, we need an 11. Nope. Move one more. Over Cambrai. 
We got an eight and then final turn here. We're over our home airfield and that completes the mission. So we're back at our home, home air base. So we don't lose any MPs for that. You actually get MPs. Um, so you get, you determine MPs. So you consult uh, P1. So for each enemy aircraft, uh, we did this already. I did it as we were going. You get points for destroying enemy fighters, two-seaters or bombers, ground targets. Um, if you had a photo recon or artillery spotting, etc., cetera, you, um, you would lose one if you landed in a non-home airfield. Um, you lose one. You lose if you you lose points if you have a friendly fighter destroyed. Um, you can lose some for your two seaters and bombers being destroyed as well. So we gained a total of um, eight, no twelve, right? Wait, let me think about that. We got two for the fighters plus two for Georges is four plus four for the tank would be eight. So we have eight mission points. Eight mission points. Um, yeah, we have eight mission points to spend. Okay, so you can buy three campaign VPs for nine. So obviously we can't do that. We can buy two campaign VPs for four. So I can buy, so we'll do that. We'll buy two victory points for four, that leaves us with five. Now, uh, basically, we're, that's all we can spend and we're gonna lose the additional ones because we, we don't have enough, we didn't get to nine. Nine would allow us to buy three. We don't need to repair any aircraft. We don't need to replace any aircraft, although we could replace some aircraft. I could ditch like Lothar and Rudolph yeah, I could try doing that and drawing new new planes. So I could do that. I could draw, you know, different different pilots basically to see if I can get better pilots, maybe pull Manfred out of the out of the hat. So I would do that probably is what I would do. And each of those would cost two. And I have four left, so I could do it do it with two. So I could say Lothar, Rudolph, Carl, not Carl, Otto, or Bruno could all be replaced because none of those guys have any skills. Carl is now a one one. So um, there are obviously things that can happen that did not happen in this. We could have um, a lot of different, there are events that we didn't see. There are, you know, you can get damage to your aircraft, which might make you have a forced landing or make a difficult landing at an enemy, um, at another airfield. You know, so things can happen where you lose a plane, you might lose the plane and the pilot, etc. There's a lot of, there's a lot in this. Um, the... The historical flavor, the color, whatever you want to call it, the um, immersion for this game is really good. But again, this is a narrative game, and I know that does not appeal to everybody. But if you enjoy narrative games, you will like this game. This game is great in that respect. I actually have this game as the print-and-play version. Um, Eric Von Rossing has his own uh, Berserker games, I believe is what it's called, where he has a whole slew of games, um, this being one of them. There's also the one that Lock and Load put put out as um, Above the Reich, I think is what it's called. It's a B-17 bomber game. There's, uh, you know, he's got a Korean uh, Korean War game, some World War II. He's got tank games. There's, there's a lot. There's a lot. So um, it's Berserker Games. You should check it out. Uh, it's all print and play. But, um, and it's all the same kind of thing, kind of narrative stuff. So if you're a crafty person and like to put together a game, then that's a, you know, that's definitely something you should look at. Obviously when you get in with Legion war games or lock and load, or, you know, obviously anybody else, compass GMT, one of the Worthington, whoever it may be, one of the big publishers, you can, um, you know, you, your production value goes up somewhat, you know, this is, this has a big sheet that we saw in the, in the other, the other video where I showed the whole map sheet, um, with tracks on it and all kinds of stuff. And there's pictures and the art, the art here is really, is done really well. So, I mean, you know, you get, obviously you get professional production value as opposed to doing a print and play and so on and so forth. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how the game plays. I may continue the campaign and do another video. I have not decided yet. Um, so this one will go up with a playthrough part one, probably. 
Whether or not there is a part two will largely depend upon the reception that part one gets. If a lot of people watch part one and want a part two, I will certainly do a part two. Um, if not, then I might let this stand alone uh, because there are other games that I want to do videos on. Uh, and I can obviously play this on my own, not for video. I'll play it much faster because I'm not yapping the whole time. So you get the picture. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Please post comments, questions, etc. if you like. Uh, also considering liking, sharing, and or subscribing if you're not a subscriber. And if you are, thank you very much for subscribing. That is much appreciated. That'll do it. Uh, my name is Joe. This has been Hexed Encountered. And until next time, happy gaming.